Brexit was always going to be hard for businesses and all types of businesses, big, medium or small. But more specifically, the big businesses were probably going to be fine. They could have the money to be able to afford the expertise. They may already have the type of expertise for exporting people know the carnets, the customs knowledge already in the house. The problem then becomes for those medium and small companies that do not have that expertise, that they have to go out and buy in that expertise. And for some medium and small businesses where maybe they do a bit of business with, you know, the EU. Again, we, we've covered stories of businesses that have had like, you know, 30 to 40 percent of their business, you know, lost because of Brexit, partly because that they just cannot afford to do or bring in this expertise with their their work or to do those, you know, those customs things because that costs money. You know, that expertise costs money. Those forms, you know, all that paperwork costs money and time, more in particular time. I, I've said before, I have a friend who was involved in um exporting post brexit that paperwork would take him an extra two hours that previously before he didn't have to do now obviously they were sort of lucky in their company that they had sort of that expertise that was obviously his you know uh speciality that he could do he could pass that on to their you know logistics department and they would sort that out but not all businesses are lucky enough to be in that situation. And remember, because they were in the single market and customs union, they could treat France, Belgium, Spain, wherever in the EU, as if it was just an extension of, you know, selling someone to over who could be in Wales or London or maybe up in Leeds or, you know, somewhere like that. So it is no surprise that even though they are very, very much hidden and none of them gain national attention, it's mainly local newspapers that tend to cover this, or as we are covering today, very, very speciality stuff that is reporting on just the amount, the sheer amount of businesses that are losing businesses, are not only losing business, but money, or finding their business models being completely destroyed. So today we go over to, well, covering just that. But before we do that, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a organization link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. So on with this then. This today comes from the art newspaper. <laughs> Again, obscure, but this is the this is the type of, of, of like stuff that actually covers these types of stories. It's never very rarely does it ever reach, you know, national news, uh, these types of stories. And so, as we said, the art newspaper with the title of Brexit ruined my business almost overnight. UK dealer says his income has plummeted by 60 percent since Britain left the EU. British dealer Steve Shovel, I thought that's how you say it, has been selling art for at least the past 15 years. He mainly deals in the old master paintings, priced anywhere between 100 to 1,500 pounds. Not enormous sums, but enough for a small business to be worth at least 1 million pounds. So, as you can see, this is what most small businesses deal with. They're you know, an average successful small business is roughly making about one million pounds, roughly around there. And these were always the firms that were going to gain problems from this, because even if you've got one million pounds, if a lot of your if some of your stuff is, is again going to the EU, previously you've not had to pay for the expertise, you don't have to pay the ex work, you don't have to pay the time to do it. Now you do. That causes a lot of problems for these businesses. And it's the same story. Every single time we cover one of these, it's exactly the same story. Before I was fine. Now it's paperwork, checks, all kinds of stuff. But 
He says his firm is now in ruins thanks to Brexit and sees no way out. He says the UK left the EU on the 31st of January 2020 and his income has dropped by 60%. He says trade with the EU was where 99% of his clients were based and is now virtually impossible. And the 30 to 50 sales he was making a week have dwindled. Before Brexit, selling to the European collectors was just like selling to a customer in Hull, he says. But now he has to fill out multiple invoices and custom declarations where shipping delays are around four to six weeks are not uncommon. He also says that a parcel costing him £14, including VAT, to Italy before Brexit now costs £22 with no VAT. So as you can see there, as we've said, small businesses increases like, you know, that was obviously £14, including that, but it's now £22 with no VAT. So this small increase like that can can be a dramatic loss in, in small companies' profits. Uh, where are we? Yep. So instead of a customer now receiving the painting, and handling ha and then hanging it on their wall, they receive a customs notification demanding import duty and a handling fee and some 20% VAT before they even get it, and approximately a 230 euro extra for a thousand euro item. So instantly, your European customers are just not interested. You know, this is this is this is the exact same story every single time we cover a small businesses that is suffering because of brexit it's the exact same story again and again and again collectors and other dealers who would routinely buy hundreds of paintings from him now tell him it's just not worth the hassle with the added costs and the onerous red tape he says that he can no longer compete with the dealers in the EU. Brexit has wrecked his small business trading with Europe, he says. Why on earth would an EU citizen buy from a UK business when it entails all the extra expenses and delays? And he's right. Why would you? And it's not just small business here. We're talking big, multi, big national companies. Why, why are we buying from Britain when it's costing us all this extra money and extra red tape? Brexit has made trading with our closest customers extremely challenging. And I am sure I am just one of the many thousands who have had their heart ripped out that was once the very successful of a small, lucrative business. The only solution, he believes, is for the UK to rejoin the customs union or for a better trade deal to be struck with the EU. At the moment, these trade barriers are killing our businesses, he says. And I'm not surprised. Um, you know, he has my he has my sympathies absolutely. You know, when when you see someone with these small businesses who put a lot of work into like the running of their businesses, you know, they put so much heart and soul into this. And I and I've worked with people who've ran you know small businesses. I've I've helped them with like you know marketing support and things like that in the past. And people who run small businesses put their absolute heart and soul into running their business. So it is such a shame where you see people like this going, my business is ruined, my business has been destroyed. You know, and like I say, if you've ever worked with a, with a small business or you have your own small business, you know just how much effort you put in to that business to, to make it run. And you know, he has my absolute sympathy, absolutely. Um, but again, he's he's not the only one. There are hundreds of thousands of small businesses up and down the country who are experiencing the exact same thing he is. And are just going, or having e either they're saying, it's just no longer worth the hassle to trade with Europe. So they're giving up on that business, which could be maybe 20, 30%, maybe 40% of their business as we've covered before, maybe even more. And that's income, 
to your business that now lost because now you've got to trade only in the UK. And that dramatically decreases the size of your potential audience you can sell to. And as we said there, just a small increase, as we as we sort of laid out there, a small increase of, you know, send charges of sending a parcel can mean hundreds of pounds a year, if not thousands more, to a small business. And that's going to have incredible knock-on effects for the rest of the country, for, the, for our economy. Incredible shockwaves going to be sent through the country now. And that's only going to build. As more and more time goes on, more of these companies are just going to go, it's not worth it, but although there already probably are at that point, and are now trying to start increasing their, their presence in a home market. And these some of these businesses are just not going to survive. But, you know, that's the straight up truth. And it's going to be an awful shame that this happened. And it is down to Brexit. So, as always, thank you very much uh, for uh, watching. Please do remember to that like, share, and subscribe. Uh, subscribe <laughs> that subscribe button. And, of course, down below there is a link to my Patreon page and an updated link called Buy Me Coffee. We can all buy me coffee. And, as always, thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you all next time.